Hi and welcome to episode 10 of Understanding Darktable. I said that in this video we would get onto the processing of some images and we will do just that. But first I wanted to cover this idea of the pixel pipe. In Darktable it's what they refer to as this fixed order in which things happen to your raw image as you process it and to the point at which the image is exported when you click export. So regardless of what order you might apply an exposure adjustment or a tone curve or some cropping or a white balance adjustment, there are all these different modules within the development area in the dark room and you can apply them in whatever order you see fit to apply them. And the history stack will reflect the order in which you have applied certain adjustments to an image. But underneath it all, in the background, Darktable has a fixed order in which modules are processed as part of the processing of an image from RAW to whatever export format you decide to export in. So I'm just going to read a couple of sections from the Darktable user manual. This is in 3.2.1 of the manual, Pixel Pipe Module Order and History Stack. Modules are applied in a fixed order. This differentiates Darktable as a non-destructive image editor from classical image manipulation programs like GIMP. As module order is fixed, you're free to activate, deactivate or change the parameters of a module at arbitrary points in time. The order of activation in your workflow does not have any impact on the outcome. Users frequently ask why the module order is fixed and if there are plans to change that restriction. There are several reasons why Darktable works in the way described. The sequence of modules has been selected with great care in order to give the highest output quality. Changes to the sequence would generally worsen the result rather than improve it. Certain image processing steps just don't make sense if they're shifted in the pixel pipe. To mention just a few, highlight reconstruction needs to be done on raw data before demosaicing. And the demosaic step needs to be performed before any input color profile can be applied. So you kind of get this idea that there are some things that just need to be done in a certain order and Darktable enforces that. So having said that, let's move on to the dark room. So I'm just going to grab one of my test images here, this one of these flowers in my backyard, and we're going to look at the exposure module. Now I mentioned in a previous video that there are these highlighted regions over the top of the histogram and they directly relate to these first two controls within the exposure module, that is the exposure control and the black point control. The right hand 75% of the histogram gets this large light grey overlay and we can left click and drag left to decrease exposure and you can see down there in the exposure module that that is changing the exposure value and if we drag to the right we are increasing exposure and that is also reflected in the module and we can double click on the histogram to reset that to zero. This 25% on the left hand side of the histogram directly relates to the black point control in the exposure module. So we can left click and drag left to increase the black point or we can drag to the right to decrease the black point, like so. In the histogram we can double click on those regions to reset those parameters to their neutral values and we can also do that on those sliders. So if we've mucked around with these values we can double click on them to reset them back to zero. Now there are multiple other ways to interact with these sliders within the darkroom and within other areas of Darktable as well. You can mouse over with your mouse wheel and rolling your mouse wheel away from you will increase a value. Rolling your mouse wheel towards you will decrease a value. And if we look at the numbers that are actually happening there, let's just mouse over the exposure. If I do one 
click of my mouse wheel away from me, we can see that that equated to a 0 0.02 exposure adjustment. Let's just reset that. If we hold the shift modifier, we can make any mouse wheel adjustment multiply by a factor of 10. So if I hold down my shift key and now mouse wheel, we can see that that created a 0 0.2 rather than 0 0.02 positive exposure adjustment. Likewise, the control key as a modifier will divide the value of a single click by a factor of 10. So now it will take five clicks before the value is affected by one one hundredth. So control click gives you a much finer adjustment and shift click gives you a more coarse adjustment. After the mouse click, there is this great thing that I have seen in Darktable that I've not seen anywhere else that I absolutely love. Let's just reset that. And it's this, you right click on this slider and you get this thing. I've never seen this anywhere and I love it. What this is, is a curve. And as you bring your mouse down to the bottom of this drop down, you get a very fine adjustment of whatever the slider is that you've right clicked on. In this case, the exposure control. So you can see with my mouse right at the bottom, if I swing it all the way to the right hand side, I get only a 0 0.1 positive exposure adjustment. And if I go all the way to the bottom left hand corner, I get a minus 0.1 exposure adjustment. Now this is where it gets really funky. As you bring your mouse higher up that curve, the adjustment gets more coarse. So if we bring it up to about the halfway mark, and swing it all the way over to the right hand side, we've affected a 0.38 positive exposure adjustment. If we swing it all the way to the left, we've got a negative 0.35 exposure adjustment. If we bring it back to the middle, so we're almost back at zero, and we bring our mouse right up here towards the top of the curve, and then swing it all the way to the right hand side, we've got almost three stops of positive exposure adjustment. And likewise, if we take it all the way to the left, we've got minus three stops of exposure adjustment. So how far up or down you have your mouse on this curve will change just how fine or how coarse the adjustment should be. This is a really quick way of working and I love it. And like I said, I've not seen this in any other software. I think it's great. There is one more adjustment that's worth knowing about, and that is when you first right click on a slider and you get this drop down, you'll see that on the right hand side, just briefly, there was a flashing cursor. Let me do that again. See that cursor flash on the right hand side? That will allow you to enter a text value with your number keys to dial in a precise figure, and that can be negative or positive in value. So if I wanted to add, let's say, plus one exposure value, right click, type one, press enter, and we can see there 1.00 EV. So we've added exactly one stop of exposure compensation. If I wanted that to be minus one stop, I would simply right click, type in minus one, press enter, and now our exposure has been set to exactly minus one stop. So those are the main ways in which you can interact with these sliders. You can use your mouse wheel to just simply mouse over and you know, roll away or roll towards you to increase or decrease a value, or you can right click on the sliders and use either that funky curve control or simply enter numeric values. You don't have to enter a plus if you're entering a positive value, but you do need to enter the minus key if you want a negative value. Okay, 
I'm gonna leave it at that for this particular video because there is so much more fun stuff to cover, but hopefully you've enjoyed this and learned something new in the process. Talk to you again soon.